Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And you know, I am a fan of movies. This is obvious. I talk about them. And I like certain things. I like good movies. And I like bad movies. I do. I, I worked in movie theaters for 14 years of my life. I've seen more bad movies than you probably have. And I find ways to like a lot of them. Uh, simply because I love movies so much and I know that it's a huge labor of love and it's something that people spend a lot of time, we're talking sometimes upwards of years, working on, and to just discredit it completely over something stupid feels like just such a slap in the face to me. It's just not something that I would like my work uh, treated like, so I try not to treat anyone's work like that. But when it comes to the Transformers franchise, I, I am torn. I will fully admit that I am torn. The first movie is legitimately a lot of fun. 2007's Transformers was kind of like peak Michael Bay, in my opinion. I mean, he literally ripped off, like every one of his own shots from previous works 2009's uh you know revenge of the fallen eh, it, it got hurt by the writer's strike they kind of had to rush through it they didn't get the chance to fine-tune the script because of all that so there's that the uh the dark of the moon the third film from 2011 actually i really liked that movie too i thought it was darker i thought it was it was it was uh, really visually appealing the 3d on it was spectacular for 2011 and it was just a lot of fun. Four and five are, oh my God, Michael Bay phoned it the hell in. And I mean phoned it in. These Those last two movies were God effing awful. And I don't say that lightly. I don't like saying that, but they were just like, oh my God. And I know where it came from. It came from Michael Bay not caring. Him collecting a paycheck. Because Bay is a good director. He knows how to direct well. But he oftentimes puts more spectacle uh and style over substance and that becomes the problem which is why films like pain and gain which was a 27 million dollar movie was a lot of fun to watch and it was a good movie because he put this the the substance over the style and he can do it but anyway the biggest problem that comes from the transformers movies is most people kind of look at it like this right they see the they see the rotten score next to optimus prime and they go yeah that makes the most amount of sense it just feels like it makes the most amount of sense obviously uh it just these movies have been critically panned they've been terribly panned and that's it, it's done a lot to hurt uh paramount you know paramount was like hey let's reboot with bumblebee and bumblebee was an okay movie it wasn't as good as people make it out to be the first five minutes were amazing like give me an entire movie set about the war for cybertron and i will be there and i will be very happy and i will buy all the merch and the toys you know show me the gen ones and i'm happy the rest of the movie, though, terribly written in my mind. Just terribly written. I didn't care for it. Love Bumblebee, but just I, hate, I just didn't like the movie. So now we find out, you know, there hasn't been much movement on Transformers for a while. But now we found out that something's happening at Paramount that's very fascinating. According to Deadline, who just dropped this a little bit ago, dual Transformers movies are in the works at Paramount. Now, I'm not too sure in 100% what all of this means, but my interpretation is that they are currently having competing screenplays being written for where to take the franchise. So it says here, Transformers, the IP that never dies, based on the 1980s toy franchise with the slogan, more than meets the eye, is being developed at, again, again, at Paramount with two projects, one by Independence Day Resurgence writer James Vanderbilt, and the other by John Wick Chapter 3 EP in Army of the Dead scribe Joby Harold. So James Vanderbilt, <laughs> Independence Day Resurgence, <laughs> I mean, again, that was a movie that was written for China, 100% written for China. Uh, so I don't really give it a lot of credit. I think he also wrote uh, White House Down, the 2013 Roland Emmerich uh, knockoff of Die Hard with Channing Tatum and Jamie Foxx. I think he wrote that movie, too. So he does big, big spectacle films. But again, uh, the, the, the style over the substance is what I can take from this one. And uh, John Wick Chapter 3 uh and army of the dead scribe joby harold now i haven't seen army of the dead yet that was uh that's a Zack snyder creation that was uh he wrote it uh, joby here would have adapted off of snyder's original concept uh but john wick chapter three i think has both style and substance i think there's a lot of substance in john wick a lot of lore a lot of world building a lot of uh character development for characters that you come to like so i'm, I'm kind of more in that particular marketplace anyway the vanderbilt project from what he has heard is based on transformers spinoff beast wars uh, and I love that they go on to explain this here, which are robots that transform into robotic animals like Cheetor and Optimus Primal and Rhinox and more. Uh, Vanderbilt has been on the project since April. The news today that that one is based in the Bumblebee universe, right? So obviously they're they're separating the universes, which is dumb. 
just kind of you you said bumblebee in the 1980s uh, you know what? You could just you could split off and 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 reboot the franchise, and I think people would be okay, provided Peter Cullen voices Optimus Prime. That's really about it. Just tell better stories, get better writers. No, Christina Hodson, she already effed up Bumblebee. Don't let her anywhere near the franchise again. Uh, now the franchise, uh, including spinoff Bumblebee, has amassed over 4.8 billion worldwide over six titles. However, Bumblebee, which was expected to be a rejuvenation of the blockbuster series, was the lowest grossing installment with 468 million worldwide during the 2018 and holiday season going up against Aquaman. Well, not only against Aquaman, but Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse and Mary Poppins, right? So we don't quite know yet what um, what the Joby Herald film is going to be, but Honestly, I don't I don't want Beast Wars. I don't want Beast Wars. I don't care about Beast Wars. I don't care about any I never liked Beast Wars. It just kind of felt like a real kind of lame Transformers knockoff. It did. I'm not to say the movie can't be good if they decide to make it, but if you recall going back a couple years when they after the last night, Paramount was like really going to dive in head deep into uh into into you know rebuilding fran uh, the franchise. Like they were going to they got Akiva Goldsmith to create a writers room of like five writers to pen out like five more Transformers movies to get an entire arc to kind of like move away from what Michael Bay has done and to tell this really kind of epic Transformers arc. And all they came up with really was, I believe, Bumblebee. That was it. You know, that was it. And it's one of those things where you're like, uh, okay, fine. Like, honestly, I would, I would argue at this point, like whoever... I'm hoping they, they got to just kind of like scratch, like go back to the beginning on, on Transformers. So much stuff is tied in to Michael Bay. And and I, and I hate to say that because I, I like Michael Bay, but I think at this point it needs something entirely new. I know Travis Knight was meant to do that with Bumblebee. And I think he did a, an okay job directing the movie, but it still kind of felt like a paint by numbers studio committee made film and not something as artistic and wonderful like his previous movie, Kubo and the Two Strings which was a labor of love that he put together at Leica Studios. And and so I just, I don't know. I would I would assume at this point it would be better if they would just kind of go back, do a Transformers streaming show, work a deal with Netflix, get them to pay for it. But they want that money and that money's going to come from the box office and merchandise. But if people ain't buying the merch, then you're not going to sell the toys. And that's exactly why Transformers was made in the first place uh, as a cartoon show was just to move product. And it did for a long time, but they kind of burned out a lot of that goodwill with a lot of really bad movies. I would hope they'd bring in people who, who are trying to tell a very interesting and, comp and competent story and they get a, an interesting and competent storyteller to do it. You know, uh, treat Transformers like effing Shakespeare and let's try to tell it in a way that's going to be uh, interesting, both thematically and story wise. Anyway, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling here. What, what, do you, what do you guys think about this one? Do you think that uh, more pair, more more movies are going to be good? Do you think they're ever going to be able to salvage the franchise? Uh, let me know down in the comment section. Also, if you made it this far, do me a solid. Type Transformers in the comment section. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I keep saying comment because I want you to comment. Uh, subscribe, all that jazz. And have yourself a great day, guys. And peace out. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to keep the conversation going, and if you made it this far, you clearly do, come on in and join the Discord. Link is in the video description. Can't wait to see you there. Have yourself a great day, and peace out.